It's the Gita Interviews, the premier global IT solution podcast, where we talk to the CEOs and business leaders who are growing their companies through global partnerships. I'm your host, Emery Giosits, the executive director of the Global IT Alliance. Hello, and welcome to the Gita podcast. I'm Emery Giosits, your host and the executive director of the Global IT Alliance. I'm really excited today because this is one of our first ever OEM podcasts. Uh, in, in regards to what we've done in the past with Jita, this is the first opportunity to branch out. And who better to do it with than the team from Lenovo? So I'm very, very happy today to have Neil Burville joining us. Neil is the Executive Director of Channels for EMEA. And also we have uh, Bert Kersey, who is the Channel Account Executive, and he happens to be over Connection, one of our premier partners. I know that uh, you... Uh, Neil, deal a lot with our other very large partner, Bekla, over in EMEA. So I'm very grateful to have you guys here today. Uh, Neil's coming from uh, the UK, and here in the States is Bert. So let's just jump right in, guys. Um, give me a little bit idea of how long you've been with Lenovo and uh, kind of what your role entails. Why don't we start with you, Neil? Okay. Well, Emery, thank you very much. Great honor to join you today. And uh, especially if we're one of your first OEM guests, I guess you start with the best. So thank you for doing that. Clearly. <laughs> um, well, I, gosh, blow me. I've been nearly 15 years. Um, so I joined in uh, 2008. I've done quite a few things. I, I've done some of the market roles. So looking after UK, Benelux, Italy, Israel Island at one point I had all the markets beginning with I <laughs> that's the only reason I can put them together um, then I had the pleasure of, of, of growing and leading our consumer sales team for Western Europe and then actually the last good number of years as you introduced me I've been in the channel team in EMEA um, and really what I do is um, building the strategy and program so how we want to reward incentivize partners, but also, especially these days, trans transformation of that business. How do we make it easier to do business with partners? So that's through process tools, enabling our sellers in a much slicker way. Um, and as you say, you know, Beckler, Beckler's a big part of that uh, journey with us. Yeah, yeah sure, so sure. Thank you. Great, thank you. So Bert, please tell us. Yeah, sure. So again, thank you so much for having us. Um, yeah, I've been with Lenovo for It'll be nine years coming up on. Um, so I came in through a rotational sales program called the Laser Program. It's really designed just to help new professionals, you know, identify where they want to go and, and expose them to adjacent roles within an organization. And so uh, I did it for two years, and I fell in love with the channel. Um, and I spent really the last seven years in the channel in various different roles. So I've supported a lot of different partners and bars on the East Coast, and uh, most recently. I've uh, been working with our NSP partner connection. Uh, so my job is to harmonize uh, all of Lenovo's various business units and our initiatives, and the things that Neil and team come up with within our partner at connection, and really just to drive our mutual strategic transformation goals. Great. So, yeah. Great. As you know, my pedigree is connection. So I uh, love those folks over there. So I think they're fortunate to have you and you're fortunate to, to be able to work with them. So, you know, o over the past couple of years, one thing we've heard consistently regarding Lenovo and its current as well is that the number one PC manufacturer in the world. Um, can you shed some light on that for me? Maybe we'll start with you, Neil, on, on why you believe that is the case and, and, and how the trajectory there ended up. Yeah, that's that's a great place to start, Emery. Um I mean, it's not just one thing, of course. Um, and I think very much more, it's it's way beyond product. I think product is the foundation of it, right? And we we absolutely make great products. We have the the, the joy of the think uh, and think bad legacy. Um, but it's way beyond it. You know, this is a business of scale and we have built our operation and and, and scale is critical to us. And that, that therefore requires you to drive a lot of operational excellence. We have a lot of our manufacturing in-house, which gives a huge number of advantages. It helped us enormously during pandemic and during the shortage. Now we're now in a bit of a different cycle. But you know, I think 
that that's what is the foundation but i don't always think it's the difference right i think it goes beyond that and i think but you know you're a prime example right i think young energetic and i'm so pleased to hear you know his journey and why why he stuck with it and genuine i think we you know i, I said about process and tools but actually i think what being different is um we build those to make the job of our sellers easier and smoother and loads of for the partner it but what they've never done is remove the people from the relationship sure so you know even even some parts of the pandemic um we adapted to geo we followed the local market restrictions and there were restrictions but also some markets started to open up quicker than others so actually we encouraged our people one to come back to the office and one go out and see partners if the partner was welcoming to see us we'd encourage our sellers to go out and i think that people that people interaction that people touch is what we still hear from from the clients i don't do you agree but right you're you're really in the front line of this you talk to the sellers every day so yeah i mean you know, i think i think you nailed it right i mean without a doubt to be the number one of anything you know the product has to speak for itself our products did right that's foundational um but our competitors make great products too so you know be number one consistently for a nice trend now right it's not just the product it's a lot more um and, and it is our people and it's our culture and it's it's if I look back at the pandemic and really, you know, why I love this job, it's it's the ability to take personal ownership and our people and our culture do that. It drives a better customer experience. You know, people had to shift where they needed to within the pandemic to, to find products. We all did. Um, but the folks who, who stayed and came back, you know, it, it has been absolutely mind boggling. Uh, the amount of opportunity and the, the lives that we've changed um because of people taking ownership i think that's what we do really really well sure yeah. sure yeah. this plays into it and i i think you guys kind of half answered this but i'm really curious and bert i'm going to start with you because you are in raleigh so you're really close to headquarters talk to me a little about i i hear one lenovo so what does one lenovo mean internally within the organization and then what subsequently does that mean for end user customers how, how would you guys frame that Good question. I mean, so, you know, to be com completely honest, right, one little was like more of an internal brand for, you know, how we refer to what our internal transformation is. Uh, and that we're going through and you really unifying our business groups, our various ones. And the reason is because, and it's only an internal, our customers and our partners just know us as Lenovo, right? We are, we're just Lenovo. Um, we don't make this, they don't make a distinction between our data center group or our client or our solutions. They just know us from that. And that's what this transformation is. I mean, technology has gotten crazy, uh, exceptionally high pace. It's transforming right now. And our customers are trying to make connections in technology that are completely dissociated from each other um, prior to now, right? Uh, they need us to provide people expertise, technology that really spans an entire organization and helps interweave and interconnect those different solutions and fix silos and apply applications and data together so that they can continue to evolve. So that's really what one Lenovo in this transformation is. It's it's being able to meet our customers where they are and where they need us. Um, and it's just having the people and the support and the structure that we can go in any direction regardless of what the need is. That makes sense. That makes sense. Neil, anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I, I think Bert said it really well. Um, yeah, like a lot of our customers and businesses, we we are transforming internally, right? <laughs> and, and like others, it helps to formulate it around around vocabulary. And as Bert says, we're trying to keep the one Lenovo part internal. We we are now branding that for the channel around something called Lenovo 360, and maybe we can talk about that later on. Sure. Um, but the transformation is a little bit linked to your first question too, which is. You know, we are number one in PC, um, but, you know, there's a bunch of other businesses. You know, we have a smartphone business, we have an infrastructure business, but actually, I, I guess the other big transformation is we're growing up from a device company only. So I think people would know us as a device company, right? That we make great devices. But, you know, as Bert says, the expectation of customers around delivery of that, transforming the outcomes 
of of for their business requires us to go way beyond that right so we are investing heavily in our service portfolio but that's to you know in the way we deploy that again is not looking to take services away from partners but maybe maybe some things which can be done from factory or in a modern deployment means that that is more efficient for a customer but also allows partners to go on to richer managed services right so it's again a, a complementary so there's the service transformation and then you know once you get beyond device um, and edge is probably a really good example you know, the Edge business group now came together from part of our PC business group and part of our infrastructure group because actually those those products themselves, the devices are, are converging, but the way to deploy them is is in a branch network for a brand or retailer is, is the, how we deliver that solution, what we put at the Edge, what you have in data center, how do you manage that? And, and, and that's the solution element. So we're investing heavily in those resources. So you'll see us, you know, and, and, and this is one of the challenges, right, is is in transforming companies is how how do we equip our sellers to do it? And, you know, but you're right at the front end, you're now expected somehow to be the master of everything. Um, but actually that that isn't fair either, I think, and I hope that you can, you know, confirm this, which is, you know, we need about to pitch what that proposition is, but the guy's not there on his own, right? We're investing a lot in uh, pre-sales, technical architects, uh, solution advisors to help partners, help our teams really bring that together or work together. So it's it's a big shift of the company, um, but you know we're on a good path, and it doesn't happen overnight, right? So, so we keep working at it, and um, uh, I think it's really positive, right? For sure. You know, one one thing, Neil, that I want to comment on that you said that um, I discovered myself. I was recently in the Mexico City location of Lenovo, and it's a very impressive location because it brought together all parts of Lenovo into one office. So we were able to see a demo center that had a Motorola phone and the. Uh, yeah the virtual reality product and the printing product and all in one showroom. So that was very impressive, including deals that we've done recently with Connection, uh, CompuGen in Canada, all GITA members, CompoCentro in, in Mexico City, that brought together every component of that. And Lenovo team was stellar in bringing the resources. So I've, yeah. I've witnessed that yeah. firsthand. So, so yeah. that's great. And I, and I think, you know, some of those businesses are quiet businesses. So you know, I think we still got work to do to make that look and joined up seamlessly, right? Because sure. don't forget, our smartphone business was acquired business, and so was the x86 business. So, you know, we've got legacy processes and tools, um, and we're bringing those together because that's just friction, right? We've got to make business to partners frictionless. The more it's frictionless, I think the more they enjoy working with us, right? So, for absolutely, sure. absolutely, for sure. Great points, Neil. Thanks. And I think that also plays into something you and I discussed, which is that new partner, new channel framework that uh, recently you've uh, released to the channel. So talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Yeah, Shalai, do you want me to take that, But maybe, maybe you can add a couple of uh, colors to it as well. Yeah, happy to hear from both. It's really opportune timing, right? Literally, what was it, 10 days ago, 7th of February, um, as I said, we, we we are packaging this for the channel under the umbrella of Lenovo 360 global framework. So there's a few exciting things in that. Firstly, you know, it is global. It doesn't mean it looks the same and is identical in every geo because, you know, as Bert said at the beginning, we think proximity and markets are not all the same. But it does mean that there's some commonality, there's some strategy, and the core principles are aligned. And, uh, you know, fundamentally what it's about is strengthening our partner's position in the market and responding better to customers. And how we do that is we've been introducing new accreditations which play into the tiering program. So in all geos around the world, we have tiering. Um, I guess connection's going to be sat right at the top of the tiering in the US, right? Uh, yes, sir. Only Special is going to be at the top of the tiering here in EMEA. 
But what's different is um, we're putting a lot more um, value into those accreditations as well as just in the past a revenue qualification and there'll be a services element as well. Um, bringing together partners through communities. So I, I think it's so crucial now that individual partners are often uh, linking with um, peers in in the industry these days to deliver solutions. Because I think it's pretty tough for partners to answer the full suite. So I think encouraging that through partner communities is part of it. And then of course I mentioned it, which is helping deliver that through tools, the resources of our sellers and, and, and also empowering partners to do that. So we kind of say that it, 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 the Lenovo 360 program is about learning and earning. So learning is at an individual level that plays into the company-wide competences and they're bucketed into five core areas such as more plates, infrastructure, um, uh, our services stack. Um, and those then give accreditations to the partners and the accreditations are part of what will determine the tiering I see. Of, of, and that obviously then drives the incentive stack. Um, what's a little bit different as well is the tierings are really coming together. So many partners and, and Bachelor and Connections and the other G2 members would already be tier members. Um, and, and they may well have a tiering for our uh, device business and for our infrastructure business. Under the new structure, those tiers would remain. So I don't think this is so applicable for the G2 members, but some partners that might only be device players, they can right. carry on there, right? We're not forcing anyone on a, on a convergence here. So they could just remain as a PC device partner at a certain tier level. Um, for the GTA members, I'm pretty sure they'll be happy because we're bringing that together. We've created new 360 tiering, so hence that full circle, um, so the whole suite of products. Um, and so these are sort of elevated tiering levels because they're playing across the full portfolio portfolio of the products. Right. So, you know, it's just announced, but, you know, I think partners are familiar what that means is we've announced really the intent, what the framework is. We're now in, and, and but you know, you explained, but we'd be in detailed discussions now, walking connection, walking back through that, because it will actually go live in April. So between the announcement and the go live, right? I guess, but you're in lots of those conversations now, right? With with those colleagues explaining what it means, uh, exploring where they can get the opportunities for the new program, right? Yeah, Neil. So, I mean, you, you referred, you know, your, your previous response that it's really my role is to, what does this look like at the partner and how, what does this new look like to the, the customer? And you know, it's my job to do that. But, but the reality is, is my job is to work with our partner because they're a part of that, right? They're, that's, that's what we're doing here with this framework is meeting them, their specialty. Um, we, we have partners all over the place. A lot of them do specialize. So, it, how do we foster that specialization? How do we help support what you really want to do, what you're really good at? As well as, you know, whether that may be one or two things, you know, someone like Connection, they have those specialty groups as well, but it's in different organizations within their overall organization. So how do we go to those groups and help them specialize with content, with solution, and how do we change that conversation and capture the bigger picture so that we can help at a larger organizational level. I mean, these co conversations are happening all day, every day, but it's um, it's been a journey that we've done with our partners. Sure. So it's none of this is really new. This is more of our joint evolution and a lot of this is from yeah. their feedback on what they need. Yeah. You know, what you guys hit on uh, thematically throughout everything you said was the partner ecosystem. And Jita obviously founded on the partner ecosystem, our ability to pull data three in from Australia or Agilent uh, from the US, uh, you know, uh, Dynacons in India to collaborate for one customer and then have the backing of an organization like yourself that is also pulling that partner ecosystem together is, is substantial. So, so I appreciate the color on that. Um, you know, now, now we hear a lot about our industry's downturn, you know, how long it's going to last, what it really looks like. 
we have evidence that it's not as severe as we thought it would be. We have evidence that it might be. We have some of your, uh, you know, c competition that had to let some people go. I know that you probably had something like that from a nutrition standpoint as well. What does that mean, or how are you seeing that play out? Uh, you know, in what the customers can expect, in in what you're doing internally to mitigate uh, these kind of things, and and what it looks like from a products or services standpoint to you guys? How, how is the alleged <laughs> downturn, uh, what are you saying from that perspective? So, you know, I'll tell you, and I'll give my perspective and feel free to add your color, you know, yeah, the, the downturn is absolutely happening, but it's it's primarily in the PC market. Uh, I'll tell you, I've never probably been as busier now than I ever have been. And it's not because we're all running around like crazy, you know, our, our portfolio scales so much beyond just our PC. You know, you, our data center is on fire. The IoT and Edge, yeah. AI, mobile, Motorola, or smart collaboration. Um, it, it is my modeling. You know, everyone thinks of Lenovo. And that initial association is ThinkPad. Um, and that's a lot because of the trust built there. Trust us in the data center. Trust us in the conference room. Trust us at the Edge. Trust us at the mobile. You know, we're those are the the, the direction and the conversations that our customers are having with us already. Yeah, our PCs, they'll come back. Um, you know, that that's okay. I think it's still full speed ahead from from my perspective. Yeah, I think I think you're spot on. I think there's a few things there, Ray, which is yeah, yeah, the yeah, PC's in a downturn, but it's cyclical, right? I mean sure. Downturn compared to what, right? And and actually a lot of the industry commentators are, are commenting and, and the classic is hey year to year or quarter to quarter right which is a relatively short horizon and and I would say if you go back and we do this right I think a lot of a lot of industries have had to adapt a little bit like this which is what was it like before the pandemic so not a year to year but a, a two year a three year compare and actually PC is still a bigger market than it was pre-pandemic and then, and then, of course, in pandemic, it exploded, right? Sure. We had, in some segments, 50% of growth. Sure. And that's one of the reasons why we had the shortage hits, right? Because demand exploded. Yeah, there were other supply side constraints too. So I think that's that's part of it. So I think it's cyclical. Um, it will come back. I think most commentators, and we're pretty confident in the second half of 2023, we're going to see a little bit of a bounce back. It's different. By market, we've got some very diverse markets in in EMEA, some mature, some emerging. So, so they're all a different place, mm -hmm. but we're pretty sure it'll come back. And you know, and, and I'll put a I'll put a stat for you. Uh, actually, we announced our financial Q3s today, and probably most people would be surprised. In Q3, forty-one percent of our revenues were non-PC. Mm. Wow. So we're already pretty diversified, right? And it depends what you call a PC, right? I have the joy of this thing, actually. I just picked it up this week. Uh, oh, it, it doesn't show on the, because uh, I've got the Zoom background on. But I'm, I'm sorry, so it didn't work very well. I'm on the smart paper device. So it's one of these e-ink devices, right? Yeah. So I've been able to throw my day book out. I'm still one of those that uses a notebook. Um, I'm really enjoying throwing that away and, and having a paperless, uh, having it sync to notes. So, you know, the diversification of, of portfolio sure. will, will see us good through through the, I guess, the turbulence. I got to tell you, for a second there, I was like super impressed that Lenovo's found out how to use your hand to write on and it transferred. <laughs> so I was, I was very excited for that technology there for a second. Um, but I hear what you said. Sorry about that. No, no, no. All good. All good. That, I mean, the innovation is is. Everyone clean. could look it up anyway. Smart, yeah. smart pipe. It was announced at CES. It's it's shipping in a few weeks. That's great. That's great. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for that. So uh, let's shift a little bit to kind of a global uh, question, a global footprint. So when you guys see your customers that have that global and and Lenovo, you know, clearly has global customers all over. I work with the Lenovo global team often on these kind of things. Um, talk to me a little bit about how the how you see the benefits of the alliance. I know Neil, you've dealt with with uh, it a couple of different opportunities. What's the value that you see that Jita is bringing to the table? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I think it varies quite a lot by segment. I think you know, at the very top, as you mentioned, we have a global account structure. 
that's a well-oiled machine, right? Which which is already equipped to partners around the world to to deliver a kind of seamless experience, uh, 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 a, a delivery of product and price to global account, accounts. But you know, they're fifty hundred thousand seats. I think the ones that actually often partners and and this is a big engagement we have with better there's a good portion of that by the way but i think the ones that are harder classically now are those international enterprise and also mid-market ones yeah. they are harder because you know often vendors are not that well equipped to deliver that and that's where we lean an awful lot on the partner and, and but maybe you've got an example or two i think that's that's where the jita Alliance really comes out and and differentiates uh, the partners in it from other partners that are really struggling how to service. You know, if you've got a mid market account of a uh, thousand seats, often often their headquarter has fifty percent or seventy sure. percent of fees. Yeah, but then guess what? They're in 30, 40 countries around the world, and they want the same experience. And that that and how to deliver that is where Jita comes to the fore. Right? Yeah, perfect example. I couldn't agree more. Um... Some examples, uh, Bert, that you've experienced. Yeah, I mean, nothing's harder than when someone comes to us and says, hey, I wanna do a rollout. I wanna make it consistent. I want it to be across 40 different countries. Let's make it happen. <laughs> and, then they, and then they say, oh, by the way, we're, we're a shop of 200. Right. And so, you know, we don't have, we have folks globally. So, you know, I'm thinking specifically of a consulting group that we worked with, uh, with Connection, and they were based out of Boston. and. They came to us with that ask and it's, you know, how do we make that happen? And we make it happen by being part of the global IT Alliance. Um, it's not just about shipping and exporting, right? That's, we can do that all day, every, it, that's not where those struggles are. It's with that in-person, in-country resource. You know, that's the differentiator. Absolutely. You know, it's having folks uh, on the ground that can provide that cultural context. I mean. There's variations in in, in linguistic and in cultural differences from town to town in, in some of these you know places, and so without that context and how do we go and make that uh, you know a seamless experience? That's what Gito really allows us to provide in a single pane of glass to a customer. For sure, for sure, yeah, and and thanks for that perspective from both of you because I see it every day. We see a combination of still remote workers that need their product and services delivered to their home. Return to work is is becoming, uh, for a lot of companies, more, more back to prevalency. And and that's, a, that's our adaptability to both is really a, a key to our success in the Alliance. We could ship to your home in, uh, you know, Mumbai, and we could also ship to your home in Sydney and fill in the blank. It, it's truly uh, an advantage. But thanks for that perspective, guys. So yeah. last two questions are kind of, uh, I like to call them the easy ones. So the first one, if if you will, I'd love to hear from both of you, on what do you love about the company you work for? You know, it's very nice to say the technology and, and you know, the products we develop, the thing, but what, what in the morning do you get up saying, I'm very happy that I work for an organization like Lenovo? Why don't you go first, Bert? Oh, I'd say yes. So, um... I love my job. I love the people I do it with, but I, I love Lenovo because it gives me and anybody the ability to make an impact. So, you know, when I was new to, to the organization, you know, it's the little things that frustrate you. And every organization has inefficiencies, uh, has, you know, problems that are fundamental that, you know, can be solved. Um, so, I mean, whether it's a typo on the website or, you know, creating a new service offering because our customers have a unique problem that there's an opportunity and there's a gap. You know, Lenovo, information has a way of getting where it needs to go at Lenovo to make change. Um, you know, I like to think, you know, that our information supply chain is as good as our actual supply chain, but in reality, I, I think it's just the people. Sure. They generally care. When they hear information that uh, we can make an impact, um, change happens. And so it's, it's refreshing and uh, to be part of an organization that that really operates that way. Great, uh, great, Neil. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're spot on, right? I mean, likewise, I love I love working here, right? You don't work somewhere 15 years if you don't like it. Um, you know, ch change is a big part of that business, right? And and everyone's comfortable with change, 
But I think that comes from an openness, a transparency, a willingness that you can try things and, and it's not wrong. And I think that's because genuinely still we try to empower people. I'm going to embarrass Bert in a minute. And, and, and entrepreneurship is key. And you know what one of our one of our one of our leaders, so Luca Rossi, who leads PC, sure. he, he has a phrase which he often will use. I mean really often will use, isn't it? And it's it's called company of owners. But basically, you know, you're in a meeting and he'll say, and think about that decision if it's your business. Is that what you would be recommending? Right. And he just he genuinely means it. One think about it when you're recommending it, that you're not just spending these invisible dollars, right? It is real money. We're in a big company, but it is still real money. But also it makes it that, you know, it's like, it is yours. You know, you, you've got the ability to make a choice here, right? But but I'm going to embarrass you because you, 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 we were chatting before this, Emre, and, and uh, I think how it went uh, was... You know, you were invited in your early career to kind of one of the campaign calls. You had your boss in the room and, and one of our other channel, our global channel leader, Pascal, was in the room. And, and your boss was like this, but Pascal was loving it, right? Because it's like, here's honesty. This is truth about the situation. Is Did I get it right, Bert? Is that how it went? Something like that. It's pretty close. I mean, it was, it was an opportunity to come and basically report on what we're going to do next quarter, what's working, what's not working. And... I had gotten tapped to come give this presentation that's really over my pay grade at the moment, still probably today. Uh, and uh, you sit in a room and, and see folks that are presenting. And I realized very quickly that all of my information was very, very different than theirs and that my perspective was different. Uh, and so I went up there and you can't change it. I mean, it's already done. It took me weeks to get it done. Sure. So uh, this is what we're going with. And being able to present and to that group, I mean, you saw a lot of eyes open up, a lot of like, oh, he's calling it, it is what it is, right? And um, and, and that was the opportunity I had to have. Uh, I ended up winning an award for it. Um, you know, it, it was a little contentious, but you know, <laughs> max for max. And, and uh, it was a really awesome opportunity to, I mean, that is my most proud moment, um, I would say. <laughs> so, but, but I, I was enabled and the folks respected my opinion and made action. Yeah. Um, so it was awesome. That's huge. That's huge. Congratulations. Um, oh, thanks. I, I, you know, to echo what you've said uh, in, in the 20 plus years, maybe 25, if I'm being honest, a, a part of my career spent in this industry. Um, I've never really had a bad experience dealing with uh, a Lenovo employee. Uh, it comes across. So everything you're saying in, in the, the way you're internally marketing, externally marketing, it comes across from uh, from a support perspective, from what I see in the channel when I'm in a customer with a Lenovo rep, and of course I do have one particular Lenovo rep that I love more than any other. <laughs> um, so you kind of highlighted, Bert, my last question, which was your your most proud. Anyway, just just to just to sure. just to add to that, you know, I Please. think there's one other aspect, which is, you know, I think I think we have a lot in common with Beschler, right? And I think that's been a big part of the successes. A lot of the Things we just talked about as a culture, I see absolutely. You know, Jurgen Schaefer, leader in Amir, John Malone, uh, James Knapp. Yeah, I think they would agree, right? But it, it, if there's one organisation that fosters that that entrepreneurship empowerment, it's definitely Beshner, right? And I think that's absolutely. why I think that's why we we click, right? We, and the people really get on, right? And we've been highly successful together. I could not agree more. And, you know, to take this just one step further, part of our forming the alliance was a vetting process. And there are components to the vetting process that are financial and making sure that there's a commitment with the organization. But the senior leadership, the board of JITA, is comprised of the CEOs of all of the companies that are members of JITA. And one of the things we look for, in particular, you know, on a lot of occasion, above all else, is do we get along? Do we want to spend time together? Uh, are we cooperative? What kind of attitude are we bringing to the table? And it hasn't always been smooth with some partners globally. But now when you look at the board, when you look at the closeness, when we have our board meetings, it truly is a differentiator that we're cooperating at that level. So I understand exactly what you're saying. And, it, and it's echoed throughout the members, Beckla, Connection, Agilent, all the others. And we see it every day when we're having our uh, interactions. So thanks for that. Um, 
So, Bert, you answered the the most proud moment, I feel like. And so, Neil, let's uh, let's wrap up with you and tell us from a career standpoint, one of your proudest moments. Well, that's tough. When you get as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I had a few, actually. I yeah. mean, they're not all of the Lenovo. I, you know, I, I was scratching my head which one to choose. And now you're saying one, right? I mean, Vi I launched Bio for Sony. Anyone that's that old that yeah, can remember that. Absolutely. Okay, I love that. Sure. Um, I started our consumer business here at Lenovo Western Europe. Pro but, you know, hey, it's just great to be part of this Lenovo family, right? I mean, what a journey. Sure. I mean, when I joined in Amir, we, I think we had 8% market share. Today, we're number one. We have 25. Wow. I mean, that is quite an incredible journey. You know, many of my colleagues were there before me and still there. Um, had that that has to be fantastic, right? And that that's also why I come to work every day. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great afternoon, Neil. Have a great rest of your morning, Bert. This has been the Gita Podcast uh, with our special guest from Lenovo today. Please check out Gita on www.gita.com or reach out to your global account manager. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you for listening to the GEDA interviews. To find out more about the Global IT Alliance, please visit www.geda.com or follow us for more great interviews.